and a very pleasant good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa, where it's night two of the Outrigger Invitational as the second-ranked Rainbow Warriors host David Letterman's alma mater, the Cardinals of Ball State. And this is Game On, presented by Spectrum Sports for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. We are super focused on everything. We want to leave a legacy. We want to show the people the what we can do and what we're capable of. We continue to improve, and um, you know we've met every challenge uh, in a match when we've been in a, a close, you know, kind of do set match. And there's been a handful of them, and uh, we have lost sets. It's just a practice during the week. You know, we got a lot of talented guys in the program, and uh, you'll see some really competitive practices. And uh, yeah, we lose sets. Um, and it's just, you know, on the nights when we've gone out to compete, uh, all the starters have been dialed in. And uh, even when we've brought the bench in, um, they haven't lost a set either. So uh, it's been impressive. Hi, everybody. Scott Robbs, Lisa Stradma, uh, Ryan Clay, Suji. It's been a while, guys, about a month or so since the last time you saw us on Spectrum Sports. But the Rainbow Warriors have continued to chug along, particularly last week, opening up Big West Conference play on the road at number three, UC Irvine. And it was more of the same for the Rainbow Warriors. I think the main reason we won was the way we respected the, the, the respect that they, we gave to Irvine. They were third in the nation, we were second. And we were taking them very, very seriously. We studied them very, very good. We, and I think we executed very good as well. Whoever voted against us was wrong. And if they want to question it, they can go back and watch the game. So what happened this weekend? I'm not saying that Irvine is a bad team. Irvine is an incredibly good team. And they took a lot of us, our time to get ready. Like, I don't think we've been focused that much on the team since the beginning of the season. Um, we really wanted to, to sort of show the, uh, the volleyball world that we, uh, we don't want to leave the decision up to anybody else. And we want to earn the right to get a berth into that tournament and to compete at the, uh, the level that we're capable of. We prepare the same way. We, you know, we just keep training, just trying to keep, keep, get better. And obviously we looked at specifics and, and how and who we wanted to defend for Irvine. Um, you know, and for the most part, we did a pretty good job. It's been a motivation for us the entire off season and throughout this year. And it's not really directed at or relevant to Irvine per se, like they didn't make the choice. Um, and for us, it's more just, look, we know that uh, we lost eight times last year. We cannot lose eight times this year. And frankly, we don't want to lose it all. So, you know, and that's what we control. We're just going to prepare the best we can and, and hopefully win uh, each and every time we go out. Well, if you're wondering why Hawaii and Long Beach State are so successful, they're by far the top two teams in the country. Consider a week ago, Hawaii went to UC Irvine, swept the Anteaters, and they remain number three in the bowl. In fact, the top four teams are all members of the Big West Conference. Pepperdine, tomorrow night's opponent, checks in at number six. And tonight's opponent, there you see at number 15, it is Ball State. So you look at Hawaii now after last night's 69-minute win uh, against uh, Ball State. The stats for Hawaii in the NCAA, these are like PlayStation numbers. They're number one in almost every category. Server Aces, they check in that second, and they're slacking in digs per set, but they're only seventh best in the country individually. Hawaii doing so much uh, better than most teams as well. Look at these players in the top five. Almost every starter is somewhere. You look at Gassman and Blocks and Worsley and Assists and Von Tilburg and Parapunov and kills per set and hitting percentage. It's amazing how dominant this Hawaii team has been so far. They're 13-0. They've won an NCAA record 39 straight sets. Well, it's absolutely ridiculous, really. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Very loud, very clear. Everybody contributing, every single player on this team. Not only the numbers speak, but the players have spoken for themselves loud and clear. And they're working very hard to achieve this. You know, you look at those numbers and those statistics. All that to say, this team is really good. I mean, I can't tell you the last time a team from Hawaii has put up those type of numbers are demolishing the competition the way they have been. I mean, you look at the stat, you know, we looked at the the rankings right now, Long Beach State ahead of Hawaii, obviously the defending national champions. 
but they actually lost the set to USC, uh, a team that Hawaii beat handily. So when you look at it, Hawaii still unblemished this season, and in some regards and in some places around the country, people are saying this Hawaii team should be number one. Yeah, well, they'll take care of that a little bit later on down the road. Long Beach and Hawaii will play each other a couple of times, and they'll also more than likely in the Big West and possibly the NCAA tournament, but it's been just a tremendous season so far. It continues tonight against the 15th-ranked Cardinals, and the gentlemen calling the action are Kano and Chris. Guys? Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, next to Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. It's been a minute. Good to see you again, <laughs> C-Mac. Good to see you, too. All right, well, we got a match here tonight, Hawaii and Ball State, that I, I think a lot of people are excited about. This is a Hawaii team that, as the corner crew was establishing, has been, to this point, Chris, historically good. Their numbers are off the charts, and, you know, you saw the, the top-ranked numbers statistically as a team in all these different categories. Another number that stands out is... Last year, Long Beach State, the national champ, number one team in the country this year, they hit 375 as a squad, setting the NCAA rally scoring record. Hawaii's hitting 482 <laughs> 13 matches into this season. Obviously, there's a lot of volleyball left to be played, but, I mean, how do we start to process this? It's, it's really tough. I, I think the best way to process it is to tell all fans to come out and see these guys live and in person because they are an entertainment product that's like no other in this town right now. Uh, the buzz is out there on guys like uh, Colton Cowell right there. Yeah. You know, he touches like 11-6 or something. He's only 6-1. Hitting 490. He, he just flies and he's hitting 490. Uh, pride of Maui, I'm telling you. And, and SVT right there. He's going to make All-American again. He may win the best outside hitter in the country award as well, depending on how things go. But this is just flat out a fun team to watch. Rado has just been on a tear. There you go. There's your national player of the week right there. And he is really, really fun to, to talk to as well. He's He's just so excited that his team is having this kind of a year. All right. So there were a lot of people who were maybe holding out true belief and buy-in, right? Saying, all right, Hawaii sweeps USC. Okay. Stanford a couple of times. All right. I think what really turned people, uh, turned their heads and really turned people on to just how good this team is, the back-to-back -back sweeps at UC Irvine, not an easy thing to do. Those were impressive, to say the least. To win at Br the, the Brent Event Center is not easy. It's a really good volleyball crowd, and uh, they can get in your ear a little bit, get under your skin, get in your head, and uh, and Charlie Wade's crew performed admirably, to say the least. They just dominated the whole weekend. I've never seen a number two dominate a number three like that in the other in the opponent's gym. It was, and I haven't seen a team this good in Hawaii since I think '96. We're talking wow. Uval Cots, and uh, it's it's they're just really special group. Plus, they're really smart, too. You know, their, their grades, their GPA is actually better than yours. And oh, college, really? I, think. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, looked, I looked it up in your bio. Not a high standard, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight across the net will be Ball State. And, and what you can say about the Cardinals, they're ranked 15th, and they're coming off of a sweep defeat at the hands of Pepperdine last night uh, here on the opening day of the Outrigger Invitational. But they won't be intimidated because this will have been the 12th ranked team that they've played already this season. Yeah, there's Joel Walton right there. He's been there 21 years, uh, and the, the, the program's only had two coaches in 50 years. They're one of the original uh, in the, in the NC2A Division I teams that started volleyball way back you know, in the 70s, and, and he's been a part of that program for the longest time as a player, then as an assistant coach, then as a head coach. And so you know, they bring game every single night. They produce all Americans every year. So they're just, they just they did not play well last night. Mm -hmm. He was not happy. I expect them to play a lot better tonight. Yeah, he said, hey, look, we just have to try to handle this Hawaii serve. It has yeah. been devastating for some opponents. He says, if we can do that, we give ourselves a chance and we can be competitive here. Last time they played in this building, not that long ago, 2017. So they know a little something about the environment here at the Stan Sheriff Center. We'll have first serve for you a little bit later on, but let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right, thanks a lot, guys. When we return, we're going to hear from outside hitter Colton Cowell. But a reminder, connect with Spectrum Sports by liking our fan page on Facebook, Instagram, and via Twitter at Spec Sports High or hashtag Hawaii MVB. Men's volleyball action at the stand. Sheriff Center, number two Hawaii, taking on number 15, Ball State. Well, Colton Cowell from the island of Maui is having a real breakout season from Makawao and King K. Kaulike High School. Look at those numbers. He's hitting 492.67 kills per set. He has turned himself from a year ago as a role player to this season being a dynamic 
and top-notch outside hitter. Well, he's, you know, super dynamic, you know, fast jump, fast arm, uh, really good ball control skills, uh, does a nice job blocking for um, really being undersized at 6'1", and uh, just a great story of achievement from a guy who's, uh, you know, really transformed his game and his body into uh, an elite level player. To get to where I am today, um, I really had to instill sort of a, uh, a belief in myself and um, growing more confidence, stepping onto the court and competing. Uh, and I can attribute that a lot to uh, my teammates. I feel that they really, uh, this year and over this past summer when I was really putting in the work to, to get better, they really did a great job of communicating to me and uh, sort of instilling uh, a certain confidence in me that, that I, uh, I had the potential to, to develop my game to where it is today. Um, and I also took uh, becoming physically stronger, faster, more explosive, very seriously. The work ethic that's taken to get him to this point, um, you know, that's something that's not really measured. And then just the part about just being a local boy and growing up here and knowing that you're going to spend the rest of your life here and how much it means uh, to the people in this community for, for not just this team, but um, to see UH compete and win at a national level, uh, you know, it's something that he completely embraces and uh, takes a lot of pride in. Time now for Over Under. It is brought to you by Bank of Hawaii, Colton Cowell, averaging about 2.67, 2.68 kills per set tonight against Ball State. Your thoughts over or under that mark in sets or kills per set, Lisa? Well, I'm going to go with under. And the reason I'm going to go with under is because I think that Colton Cowell is doing a fabulous job, number one. But last night he had five kills. And I think that Joe Worsley has truly been working on establishing the middle. He's setting them as often as he can, which generally means the outside hitters are not getting set as often. At least that's the trend I saw last night. You know, I think that this is going to be a much tougher challenge for Hawaii. So I went over. I think that Colton will get potentially three kills per set, and maybe finish the match with nine. I think we have to also remember that Colton is a player that has not only proven to be offensively a threat in the front court, but he hits the big just about as any player, better than any player in the country, I think. The temple of it, it's a set that he enjoys. So Joel Worsley will look to find ways to keep him involved in the offense, both in the front and the back court. But going back to that package, I think Colton is a great example uh, for the neighbor island kids who have a dream of wearing this jersey coaching really showing that it is possible and really putting maui volleyball on the map proving that you can come from a small island outside of oahu and still be a big time division one volleyball player well, we'll definitely keep an eye on colton and the rest of the rainbow warriors when we come back we'll talk about the matchup hawaii ball state And there you see it is the 25th annual Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Invitational. Last night, it was King. Tonight, it's number 15, Ball State. Tomorrow night, number six, Pepperdine for the University of Hawaii. We talked to Charlie about the very prestigious Invitational. One of the great events in men's collegiate volleyball um, and really thankful for the relationship that we have with Outrigger, you know, 25 years of, of supporting what the premier men's collegiate volleyball event. Um, you know, and, and we think we got a pretty good field in this year. You know, King is a uh, last year NCAA participant and league champion, um, something we're very jealous of. Uh, Ball State is, uh, uh, you know, one of the all time successful programs. Uh, not only from the Midwest, but throughout the country, and they got a lot of good players and play at a high level. They're top 15 ranked team and have been all year. Pepperdine, uh, perennial program, you know, top five program, and uh, you know, they uh, they'll be a load to deal with for sure. Time now to say what? Brought to you by First Hawaiian Bacon. The Outrigger Invitational every season is a lot of fun. It used to be like in the first week of the season. A little bit different now with the Big West Conference, but your thoughts on this year's tournament and the opponents? Well, I really like the fact that this tournament is happening right now because it gives them back-to-back -back competition. It's not all at the front load, and it gives the opportunity for these players to see a lot of different teams night after night. The thought on, this, on Hawaii's team and the teams that are here, I think it's just, again, another opportunity. The opponent, Ball State, coming in at rank number 15. This is their eighth time coming in to play. And I think that they're just seizing the opportunity of being here again, playing in the outrigger. 
you know, you think at the development of this tournament as a whole as well. I mean, this is a team uh, and a, a tournament now that has become one that really helps Hawaii's overall RPI playing teams from different conferences and giving them different looks of teams that they don't need to see during the conference season. But the Outwigger Classic as a whole it just has so many storied games and matches. It's become one of those premier tournaments in the country. And at one point, everyone in the country wanted to be a part of it. It was that preseason tournament that all the teams wanted to win. The Outrigger, it really in itself, has developed into just a synonymous name with excellence in men's volleyball. And this weekend should be another great example uh, of the level of competition that Hawaii will have to overcome on its quest to play in that national championship. Last night, Hawaii won in 69 minutes. I expect it'll be a couple of minutes longer than that one, don't you? Well, I think it will be, but you never know with this Hawaii team. I mean, you look at the numbers that they are putting up against opponents. They are demolishing the opponent. So we'll see what happens. Got to look at ball stage. They're going to try to get Hawaii out of system with some really tough serving and hitting high off of the Manoa Roofing Company. Hawaii's block has been sensational all year long. All right, Hawaii will try to make it uh, 14 in a row. The three of us will be back at intermission, but coming up next, Kanoa and Chris with the call. And outside hitter 6 8 seed from Amsterdam, Netherlands, number four, Stein von Tilburg. One sophomore from Moraga, California. Number six, Gage Worsley. And middle blocker, 6'6", six, six, senior from Lindenhurst, Illinois. Number 11, Dalton Solbury. Middle blocker, 6'10", junior from Clovis, California. Number 15, Patrick Gassman. <laughs> and outside hitter, 6'2", junior from Makawao, Maui. Number 17, Colton Kawa. Six nine junior from Sofia, Bulgaria. Number nineteen, Rado Parapunov. <laughs> and that setter, six one senior from Moraga, California. Floor captain, number one, Joe. The Hawaii staff manager Matt Larson, volunteer assistant Chad Giesman, assistant coach Joshua Walker, associate coach Milan Zarkovich, head coach for your Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. tied its best start in program history and has won an NCAA record 39 straight sets. Current ABCA and Big West Player of the Week, junior opposite Rado Potapunov has been beasting this season, leading the Rainbow Warriors with an even four kills per set. Coming up on night two of the Outrigger Invitational, the Ball State Cardinals take their swing at the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. And with that, we welcome you inside the Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy and Chris McLaughlin. C-Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, for Ball State, they need more bat from Matt. That's more offensive output from their All-MIVA, former All-American, Matt Shevs. Only eight kills last night against Pepperdine. And for Hawaii, keep their eyes on the prize. They can't let all the distractions get to them. They want to go for that league and national championship. 
Ball State on the attack. They go to Matt Shevs, and he's able to break the ice. He is their go-to player. Upperclassman, 6'8", junior from Brookfield, Wisconsin, second on the team, 3.09 kills per set. Did he just hear my keys for the game? Is it, what's going on? Did I project that loudly onto the court that he heard more, Matt, more bat from Matt? He takes instruction well, there's no doubt. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And Lemuel Turner, another junior, 6'6", middle hitter with the serve. Hawaii's middle hitter, Pat Gassman. Able to fire that one down for a Hawaii kill. Gasman, 6'10", junior from Clovis, California. And so the Rainbow Warriors are on the board. Hawaii coming in 13-0. That is tied for the best start to a season in program history. Last time they did it was in 1996. All they did that year was go on to the national championship match. Hawaii goes once again to Gasman. And he at home. Gasman hitting 526 on the year. There is a statistic that shows three Hawaii individual players in the top five in kill percentage nationally. All of them pin hitters. The thing is, the caveat, Gasman and Hawaii's other middle, Dalton Solbrick, would also be in the top five. In fact, they'd be above all three of those hitters. But because they've been winning so demonstratively, they haven't accumulated enough attacks to qualify for that category. Normally, when we look at kill percentage, the middles are the ones who hit for the highest percentage. And as you said, if you don't have enough attempts, you can't be in the top five. So Shev's now back to serve. 25 aces on the season to lead the team. He is climbing that chart career-wise in Ball State program history as well. And it has been the Gasman show so far offensively for Hawaii. He's got three kills. Hawaii's got three points. It's the Mutt and Jeff show. <laughs> Smallest guy on the court. Joe Worsley sent it to the biggest guy on the court. 6'10", Pat Gasman. Skateboard King. Stein von Tilburg, and he deals an ace out of the deck. Hawaii is third nationally in aces per set. And Stein has done a great job, I think, this year of developing other serves. He doesn't just hit the, the power one all the time. He, he can pull the string and hit that change out very easily. Good serve there, the pass by Shevs on the money. Dump shot is sniffed out by Joe Worsley. Here's Rado Potapunov. The reigning ABCA National Player of the Week. He has taken his game to yet another level here this season, C Mac. You know, he, he, he played 10 years of club ball. He played six years with the national, national junior national team and youth national team. And it's really starting to show now. His experience, his self confidence is just skyrocketing. So Hawaii up three. Backside set goes to Shevs. Block got a piece. Worsley able to dig it up. Here's Potapuno from SVT. And a good dig there by Shevs. Bump set goes left side to Ben Chinisi, who is dug up. Gage Worsley sets up Rado, and he tools the block. 6-2, just like that. They score points in bunches, especially from behind the service line. Last night, I think uh, SVT led them in total serves. Looks like tonight he might lead them in total serves as well. Pass tight to the net. A little pinball action. It will be returned. So Hawaii now on the attack. Worsley jump set. Back row to Stein. And Von Tilburg with a flying Dutchman. Averaging 3.7 kills per set. Forces a Ball State timeout. Five straight points for the Bows. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. That was the place to be, the Ed Wong Hospitality Room located here at the Stan Sheriff Center where some of the uh, Booster Club members gathered to wine and dine here prior to Hawaii volleyball matches. They got to get that in quickly because these matches have gone by so quickly. <laughs> Stein von Tilburg delivering another ace. That's now six straight points for the Rainbow Warriors. Eight serving two now. Back row set and the dig by Gage Worsley. Joe from his wallet able to set up Colton Cowell who finds the floor. And Hawaii off to an incredible start here against Ball State. Three things there. Number one, Stein Van Tilburg showing he can serve down the line, 
cross court. He's got the soft shot. We might see the soft shot right now. We'll see. But then the dig by Gage Worsley and then the set by Joe. Amazing. Another great serve by Stein. Forces the overpass. High ball set to Rado with three blockers up. And it didn't matter. Hawaii has opened up a 10-2 advantage. Seven kills. Make that eight kills for the Bows on 10 total attempts. No errors. You know, Ball State had three blockers up. Normally that would be successful. Advantage to the blockers. They also needed a ladder, Kanoa. Oh, and Stein von Tilburg with the service error, and he was extremely upset with himself after that. I mean, this is a team despite... Wanted to serve out the, the game right That's right. There. But, I mean, that's an indication of, of this team's grit and character, right? I mean, despite the success, it seems as though all that's doing is pushing them and urging them to be even more focused. Pass tight to the net, and they're going to call Joe Worsley for the lift on the set to Gassman. Charlie Wade disagrees. Dixon Chun atop the ladder. Ernie Ho down on the floor, along with the line judges, Kevin Chun and Melinda Rusher. Looks like the ball might have stuck in Joe's hand a little bit too long. So four serving 10. The serve by Chinisi, diving pass by Stein. How about that back set to Rado by Joe Worsley? But Rado missing the floor wide, and so Ball State now ripping off three straight points as they try to weather this early Rainbow Warrior storm. Ball State coming in 9-9 nine and nine on the year. But they have played already, prior to tonight, 11 matches against ranked opponents. And that includes wins over Ohio State and CSUN. So they're not going to feel intimidated. They've been in this tournament previously, last time in 2017. So this isn't as novel an experience for them as it would be for some other teams from the Midwest. Block got a piece there. Stein covering the back line. Backside set to Potapuna. Pumps it long. Net violation, though. Bales Hawaii out. Rado, Rado will draw players trying too hard to block him sometimes. That's what happened just then. And just a little too much effort on the part of Ball State. Got tangled up in the net. Avoids what would have been his second hitting error. Hawaii just one hitting error as a team so far. Gassman. Turning up the heat there. That was 67 miles an hour on the gun. But a good swing by David Seabom. 6'4 senior from St. Louis, Missouri. Third on the team in kills. Two and a half per set. He's hitting 238 on the year. Brings some experience. He's already played at Quincy. And, uh, played a lot there and then transferred over. He's the second outside hitter off the bench. But tonight he gets the start. Middle set, that's Dalton Sobrig getting in on the fun. He's hitting 554 on the year, 1.69 kills per set. Now serving. But he ranked second in the latest ABCA poll. On the other side, Ball State is 15th. They actually started the season outside of the top 15 rankings, but a 2-0 start got them in there, and they've been hovering between 10 and 15 ever since. What an effort there by Gage Worsley, but it winds up a point. For Ball State. Seabom with the touch shot. And it's seven serving 12 coming up. Lewis are trying to pick on Joe Worsley on the outside there. Set Seabom trying to pick on the Hawaii's smallest blocker, but I think they may find out soon that Joe Worsley is no slouchy blocker. He can, he can get up there. Quinn Isaacson, sophomore setter from Plainfield, Illinois. With the serve, Solbrig in the middle. Ball rattled around and returned. Good scramble play there by the Cardinals. Here's Rado on the D set, and he demolishes it. Hawaii up 13-7. Yeah, one thing, good thing for Hawaii is that Ball State's playing better than they did yesterday against Pepperdine. Much scrappier, they got a little bit better offense going on. They're serving better, so I think Joel Walton's got to be happy about the way his, his players have responded from yesterday is what I would call, I think he would call, dismal performance against Pepperdine. Colton Cowell with the serve. High and away, the set goes to Shevs, and he tools the block. Shevs now with three kills. This is night two of the Outrigger Invitational. Hawaii defeating King University last night in straight sets in a match that lasted an hour and nine minutes. Meanwhile, we were over at Les Murakami Stadium in a game that lasted four hours. Just saying. 
You want overtime? Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little disproportionate is all I'm pointing out. Here's Rado. And we got another net violation called against the Cardinals. Looked like Lemuel Turner got stuck in the twine. Rainbow baseball team where they come from behind victory last night against Oregon in that series opener. It was a great day for Hawaii for a number of different sports. You know the story of Lemuel Turner. Okay? Go for it. He was the guy who, who uh, with his freshman year, he went out at halftime of the basketball game, made the halftime half court shot for free tuition for the year. <laughs> Later was on Ellen DeGeneres, and she gave him all a car for the year. Oh, man. How was that? So, uh, He's living right, is what you're saying. Great guy, and he was uh, his athletic director called him one of the best best athletes that's ever come through their high school. Orsley goes outside to Stein off the block. Good scoop up there by Chenisi. Here's Shevs took something off, and he finds the opening past the diving Colton Cowell. So Ball State starting to find its footing. You sense. You know, play much better defense than, than yesterday for sure. Touching a lot more balls. Seems like they've uh, probably watched a lot of film on Hawaii. Served by Turner. And we'll give it back to Hawaii. First to 15 are the Rainbow Warriors. We'll have a timeout on the floor. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. This is NCAA consecutive sets one. These are the all-time records here in Hawaii with its current streak of 39 straight sets. To open the season is the NCAA record. Hawaii, interestingly enough, from back in 2017, tied with last year's national championship Long Beach State squad for second with 32 straight sets won. And that's just an indication. This Charlie Wade coached squad is, and this is not hyperbole here, it is off to an historically good start, statistically and otherwise here in 2019. Nice dunk down there in the middle. As Parker Swartz was able to get it down. 6'5", senior from Grand Allen, Illinois. Hitting 430 on the year. Remember that, remember that key to the game I told you about? It might have been a net by the you know, About more, more bat from Matt. Matt Chevs. Well, Chevs is responding. He's got four kills, no errors, hitting 800 right now. One of the reasons why Ball State is hanging in there with Hawaii right now. Block was up there on Stein. He'll get a second crack at it. And this time, he wins the battle against Ben Chenisi. One area that Joel Walton says Ball State has lacked here this year, even in matches in which they've been successful, offense in the middle. Yeah, that's, that's been a, a real struggle for them. And, and he said day one when he got here, he said, we're working a lot in the middle because we want to improve that part of our game. Well, it all uh, starts with a pass, though. We haven't been passing all that great in this tournament so far, and that's why we haven't seen much in the middle. Colton Cowell pumps that one long, and so after a razor-sharp opening to this first set, Ball State hanging around, and a couple of instances of self-inflicted sloppiness on the Hawaii side of the net. Janisi with the serve. Pass by Stein on the money. Worsley pushes it quickly to the outside pin. And Colton Cowell hammers it down. 2.67 kills per set. He's hitting 490, fourth nationally in kill percentage. That ball was set on a string right to the right spot. Middle blocker late getting out, out there. Colton Cowell hit right in the hole in the block. Pretty, pretty uh, textbook outside set. Jakob Tella. The freshman from Norway now in and back to serve. Southpaw swing sends it across. Left side, that's Seabong. And he gets the point for Hawaii. Hawaii led by as many as eight here in this opening frame. And getting back to Colton Powell, one of the topics of discussion on my radio show back on Maui was we were trying to come up with a nickname oh, for Colton Powell. I Kyle. heard about that. Yeah. How about the run up there on the serve by Swartz? Back row Stein is blocked and roofed. Makawao Masher was one. Makawao Masher was one. Uh, Haleakala Hammer was another. Those seem to be the two that get the best response. So I presented them prior to the match 
to Colton himself. I said, well, what do you think? Either of those you like? He goes, how about just Colt? So he wasn't really feeling it. <laughs> He's a pretty humble guy. <laughs> That's right. Dug up there on the Cowles swing, but it hung above the net right for the picking, and Dalton Solberg was able to put it down. Solberg, by the way, you know, is going to be graduating this year. Summa cum laude. So few of us. <laughs> you still have your plaque on the wall, obviously. <laughs> it's that special. 18 serving 14, Potapunov. Roll shot there and a good angle taken by Seabomb. He had three blockers up against him and almost like a beach volleyball shot just found the opening. That was a brilliant little wrist away by Seabomb. He saw the third blocker come over, emptied out that spot in the front row, which is an area four there, wide open. Brilliant play. Ball stayed within three here. Keeping it tight, the step out. Solbrig hits it long. And so Ball State within two. Credit the Cardinals. They have held tough. They trailed by as many as eight. And Charlie Wade now with a look of slight discomfort. This is a Hawaii team that has yet to lose a single set this season. Ball State within a pair. Here's Rado. Oh, boy. Right between the wickets of the block. Oh, he's getting so good at being deceptive on his shots. It looks like he's going to go angle there, and instead he goes right down the line. He's got that true line shot, but most of the time he gets wrist away cross court and uh, hits it with power and accuracy. Seven kills for Rado. Outside it goes to Shevs. Diving save, Gage Worsley. Joe tried to scoop it up with the spatula to no avail. Ball State now hitting 550 here in this opening frame, C-Mac. We haven't seen too many of those kinds of percentages from opposition to Hawaii this season. I think, I think the, the, the opponents like, are hitting like 164. 153, 153 to be exact. Yeah, they're hitting a low, low number. So for the, for the opponent to be uh, uh, hitting 500 is uh, unheard of. We got a little blood coming from the nose of Gage Worsley. So, did, did, did he last be taken out? What do you mean? No, he probably. Not Gage Worsley. It, it probably actually excites him or something. Yeah. yeah. Gets him even more pumped up. Yeah. Renee Shigamura, team trainer. There you see the parents of the two Worsley bros, Roger and Christine, in the house. So some time being utilized here to tend to Gage. Gage Worsley, the younger of the two. He's a sophomore. Joe is a senior. Gage already a Big West Conference Player of the Week back in the first week of February. Averaged three digs per set in the two wins over Stanford here in this building. Had 11 digs in the first of the two matches. Had 11 digs last night against King University. That was pretty amazing. He was the only player who played all three sets. It's part of the reason why he got the big numbers, but... 11 digs in, in three sets is uh, it's pretty darn good. Well, this thing is gushing pretty darn good. Taking a little bit of time as you take an, another look at Renee Shigamore. She's been with the University of Hawaii for a while. and Does a women's program as well. Works for right. Robin Santos. She does a great job. She's one of, she really does. One of the best trainers around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My guess is that they're only going to have so much time, they're going to have to sub somebody in. Right now, they're going to, I guess, clean up the floor from the blood. And what does this do? Is there an advantage for either team with this pause in the action? You had Ball State feeling probably pretty good about itself, maybe not wanting to have any kind of interruption to that. You have Hawaii, though, that was, you know, had its moments of sloppiness maybe they're enjoying just having a, a moment to catch their breath yeah and ball state 11 kills no errors so far no hitting errors at all hitting 550 so i agree with you i think the disadvantage here is to ball state they want to keep rolling why meantime gets to basically hit the reset button and uh, but they may have to put in another player looks like looks like gage is going to put some stuff in his nose <laughs> and, 
like a second grader with a band-aid, he yeah. goes out there and shows off. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. He's a character. He's a competitor, that's for sure. Ball State being competitive here in this opening set. And we're going right after Stein Van Tilburg. Rado comes flying in from the back row, and he gets the point for the Rainbow Warriors. That is something you touched on right there, C-Mac, that Charlie Wade has commented on frequently here in the last few weeks, is how good Stein Van Tilburg has been in the serve-receive game, because as you alluded to, teams tend to pick on him. Well, they don't want to serve words that he's good. They don't want to serve Cowell, he's good. So they go to the third passer, and that's SBT, and SBT's been hanging in there. Jump set high and away goes to Chinisi. He hits it high and away. And out of play. And Hawaii back up a four spot. Joe Walton's got to call a timeout here to slow Hawaii down. So again, that pause in the action to tend to Gage Worsley in the bloody nose appears to have benefited the Rainbow Warriors. They scored two straight points. I agree. I agree. And we'll see uh, if uh, Joel Walton can get his crew back on track. Their first hitting error was that last one hit long. So Ball State hit 476. Hawaii hit 448. And speaking of well, before we get further into that discussion, let's send it over to Ryan Kalei Suji. Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kono. Well, obviously here on the Ball State sideline, they're looking for a way to stop Rado Parpuna. Nine kills already in just this first set. The coaching staff saying that they're thinking they're doing a nice job playing defense around him, but a lot of times their blockers are just being far too aggressive. Three of Parpuna kills have come on net violations because of the aggressiveness of the blockers. So the coaching staff really right now trying to get their players to not necessarily do something out of their comfort zone, just playing straight and uh, disciplined volleyball against Parapunov on the Hawaii sideline. Gage Worsley continuing uh, to check on that nose. We'll see coming out uh, if that blood continues or if he has that plug in his nose to stop the bleeding. Back over to you guys. Thanks, Ryan. Rado Parapunov, eight kills on 10 swings, hitting 700 C-Mac. <laughs> Those are ungodly numbers. Video game-like yeah, numbers. <laughs> and, and really, this is another statistic what we were about to get into when talking about team kill percentages coming into this match, Hawaii hitting 482 as a squad. To put that into perspective, last year's Long Beach State team, which went on to win a national championship, only had one loss, and that happened to be to Hawaii. They hit 375 as a squad, which set the NCAA rally scoring record. Hawaii is over 100 points better than that right now. And hey, look, the schedule is going to get tougher. They will play, among other places, at Provo. They will play at the Pyramid against Long Beach State in the final two matches of the Big West Conference. As James Anastasiadis decides to get in with an ace of his own. But just to have that kind of statistical firepower offensively 13 matches in, it blows your mind. It also says, I, I think, that there's a pretty good chance they'll break that 375 record. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> They're setting themselves up to chase it, that's for sure. Anastasiadis into the tournament. I mentioned Hawaii 13 and 0. They have a chance tonight with a victory to set the program record for best start to a season. Last time they went 13 and 0, 1996. That was Yuval Kotz and company. They ended that year 27 and 3. Lost to UCLA in the NCAA championship match. That was Stein Metzger's crew over there on the Bruins side. Here's SVT off the block, joust at the net. Bumped up in the air by Joe Worsley. Gage Worsley with the bump set to Rado. He tried to slice it thin. It misses wide. The Hawaii players want a net violation. What Charlie Wynn is asking Ernie Ho now is, was that ball down before the net? We'll see what happens if the net happens first or second. There's the ball down, and then the net occurs after that. Yep, good call. That's exactly what Ernie Ho was explaining to Charlie Wade, saying, I saw the net violation ball was down. Backside set, Rado had to fly in. Great pancake save in the back row. Credit that one to Colin Ensolaco. And Ball State gets the point. Nice pancake by Ensolaco. 
of Orland Park, Illinois. And Ball State, feisty to say the least here as Hawaii takes the timeout. Cardinals within two. Let's take a look at tonight's Jack Fact. Here while we have a break in the action. Record setting pace as a team. Hawaii hitting 483 this season. Since going to the rally scoring format in 2001, no NCAA team has ever finished the season hitting 400. 399 Penn State in 2008. That number we mentioned, Long Beach State, since the 25-point rally scoring started. Long Beach State setting the record last year, 375. That number, 399, was the 30-point rally scoring days. So you got to differentiate that was, that was here in the history of volleyball. 2001, 2008. I mean, it's just those, those uh, seven years, or eight years. Yeah, those are <laughs> Is this the first time out we've seen out of Charlie Wade this year? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I, I, I think we've seen. But most of the opponents calling touchdowns. I think we've right? seen. No, we've definitely yeah, seen some touchdowns. He may have called one or two. Yeah. This is good for Hawaii though, to get pushed like this. They need this. They are getting pushed indeed. Worsley to Worsley to Stein through the block. Ball State keeps it up again. That's Isaacson laying out. Chinisi. Gets it down between Stein and Gage Worsley and Ball State within one. A 4 old Cardinal run. Solution's the one that uh, made all MIVA Frost team last year. Remember, he had 13 kills last night against Pepperdine, the only guy who really he got into double figures. He hit 345, so he's picking up right where he left off last night. Crowd starting to get antsy as well. Worsley backside Rado against a solo block, and he just gobbles Janisi up. Potapunov now with nine kills, and that was a biggie right there. Hawaii back up two. Joe Worsley to serve. Backside set, Chevs dug up along the back line by Cowell. Worsley goes cross court to Stein through the block. Great one-handed save by Isaacson. Bumped over the net, though, by Sheds. And Rado Parapunov says, Mahalo Nui Loa. And he gets his 10th kill. Ten kills in one set. He's averaging four, so he's doubled his output. More than double his output. You know, if you have five kills per set, you're leaving the country for sure. Coming into this match, hitting 515. Rado second in the nation in individual kill percentage. Average 5.6 kills per set, hit 463 in the two wins at UC Irvine. And the first Hawaii player to win the National ABCA Player of the Week award since Taylor Averill did so in 2015. Looks like we got a review here from Joe Walton. Not sure what he's, what he's challenging. Might have been on, on SVT's first swing on the left side early in the rally. So it wasn't at the point of contact for Rado Parapunov's swing that ended the rally. He's looking at earlier. earlier in that sequence, I think on the other side, the, towards the other pin exactly. uh, for a net violation for Hawaii. Joe Walton, good guy to talk to, huh? He's been Ball State head coach now 21 seasons, a winning record in 19 of the previous 20 seasons. Yeah, he's done a great job. He was a great player there, too. You know, he had the, the dig record there for a while. Hmm. I think he's still number three digger of all time at Ball State. He once had 25 digs versus Ohio State in 1987. So. 
part of two league championship teams at Ball State, thus making two NCAA appearances. And he kind of had the look on his face like it was worth a try. Well, it was also worth a third time out. It's like getting a third time out. So a little ball here in set one for Hawaii. They came out like gangbusters, led by as many as eight. Credit the Cardinals, though, keeping it tight. Hawaii trying to finish the deal here in the first frame. Quick set goes to the middle, and that's dug up by Joe Worsley. Stein, though, had a hard time negotiating that promotional signage wall across the way. And so it winds up a Ball State point. Give the kill to Parker Swartz. He's, chefs. He's, a, he's a good server. And he serves it long. And that's how set number one comes to a close. Well, Hawaii got tested a bit, but they have now won 40 straight sets to start 2019. The NCAA record grows. In another universe. <laughs> that said, he was really the primary weapon for Hawaii, and, and by a large margin, the next closest was Patrick Gassman, who had three kills. Those are the first three points of the set for Hawaii. I'd be very surprised if Charter Wade hasn't talked to Joe Worsley in the break here and said, Joe, we got to start spreading it out. We can't have Rado hitting every single ball all night long. But certainly he'll get more of his share because he's playing so well, but uh, Hawaii's got to develop those other players. We got the Outrigger Spring Fling Tournament going on at Rainbow Wahine Softball Stadium and Hawaii getting a win over Niagara, 3-0. And the Rainbow Warrior Baseball Team over at Les Murakami Stadium taking on the Oregon Ducks. What a great come from behind victory last night for the Rainbows. Dalen Kalikdan hitting a bases loaded three run double in the bottom of the eighth to put Hawaii up 7-6. They would end up winning that one. But how about Oregon getting two runs off of Dylan Thomas in the first inning here tonight? And so a competitive ball game over at the stadium. Just down the street a little bit. As Shevs, just like set one, gets the scoring started with the opening kill. He's now got seven kills, no errors yet for Shevs. Nine tries. He's hitting the seven, the 78. Those are Rado like numbers. <laughs> How about no blocks in that first set for yeah. either team as Chefs goes? It really surprised me because both these teams have a ton of film on each other. They each play uh, so many matches, well over 15 matches a piece. And they've seen, you know, they have access to all of those matches. I'm surprised that there haven't been more. More blocks. I bet we'd see one or two here in this set. Well, Hawaii leads the nation in blocks per set. And right on cue. Pat Gaskin, who individually is tops in the nation with 1.69 blocks per set. So, uh, yeah, they are blockless no more. Two serving one. Your timing is impeccable, my friend. <laughs> Worsley surveys the floor, goes back row to Stein. And that was a free swing for SVT. You know, Worsley's got the blocking on the other side, blockers on the other side, trying to figure out where he's going to go. He's so deceptive. And uh, he just keeps that middle blocker guessing and very often giving his, his back row attack on the big hitter, you know, like you said, a free net. Stein into the twine. It is now two serving three here coming up. And retreating back to serve for the Cardinals, Ben Chinisi, 6'4 sophomore from Sellersville, Pennsylvania. As an MIVA all freshman team selection last year. Worsley goes quick middle to Gassman. Outside the set goes to Seabomb. That one sniffed out with two hands by Joe Worsley. Gage sets up Cowell off the block. So the Cardinals on the attack, they go back row to Chinisi. Forget about it. Hawaii says Ahole. And another block for this Hawaii front. Did I tell you the blocking would have proved the second? I can't remember if I told you that or not, but the blocking was definitely picked up. 
Gasman loves blocking too, by the way. One of his, might be his favorite thing to do other than digging the ball in the back row after he serves. It's like you know this game as Gasman goes long. It's like you've coached it. In the serving box, well, three serving four here, inching along early on in set number two. Hawaii with the opening frame victory, extending their NCAA record streak to 40 straight victorious sets as Shevs against three blockers is able to still make it work. Shevs is really starting to show his freshman year all MIVA, ABC, All-American, all honorable mention form. He didn't have that form last night, to be sure. He hit a buck 90 and only eight kills. Look at that hybrid serve by yeah. Parker Suarez. That's beautiful. Potapunov. Well, three blockers were up there. He goes right by all three and gets his 11th kill. Yeah, Matt Shebs, he now has eight kills on 10 swings, no errors. He had eight kills in the entire match last night against Pepperdine. Yeah, he's, he's turned it around for sure. Rosado, fourth in the nation in aces per set average. Passed by Chinisi. Middle set pounded down by Lemuel Turner. He played just nine matches in the previous two seasons for Ball State. We talked about Coach Walton wanting to work the middle more. That was a great example right there. Chinisi put up a perfect pass, which allowed Ball State to run the middle. So it is five serving five. Corrado again, blocked and roofed. Turner right next to Seabomb. Ball State gets in the blocking column. And it is the Cardinals in front here in the early going of set two. And what they have effectively done, C-Mac, is they have kind of quieted this Stan Sheriff Center crowd for the moment. Here's Cowell up the ladder. Two hands saved there by Nick Levanchi. Back row set to Nisi. Return to sender. Believe it or not, this is good for both teams. It's good for Ball State. They're starting to play way better than they did last night. You know, Joe Walton's happy. It's good for Hawaii to be pressed like this. In order to get better, they've got to be really pushed by teams night in and night out. Early tomorrow night against Pepperdine, they definitely will be pushed. They're a great serving team. The pass there by Levanchi. Shevs dug up by Gage Worsley. Joe goes outside to Stein. Solo blocker against him. Punched up in the air by I Isaacson. And return. Good second touch by Seabom. Here's Stein. A second crack at it. And this time it's effective. You may slow down Stein Ben Tilburg once. You're rarely going to stop him twice in a row. Four kills now for Stein. Great play call. It's called a, a gap go. Is what it is. It's that 31 set to the middle attacker. Get them to commit and they can't get back to the outside for the gap for the uh, go set. It's an ace for Colton Powell. Kaelin Kekaulike product puts Hawaii up a deuce. Fireballs that one just under 68 miles an hour. Sheds. It's going to be a net violation called against Hawaii. It's either Worsley or Solberg, not sure which one. Hawaii's pretty disciplined. We don't see many blocking errors by them, do we? They don't get tangled up in that very often. They don't get over aggressive. I think they have a lot of confidence that the defense behind them will, will dig it up. How about that serve by Seabomb? That was an A-bomb. <laughs> That's -bomb. absolutely right. Ten aces on the year for him. That one ties this second frame up at eight. Ball State came to play here tonight. Passed by Gage. Joe Worsley goes high and away to Stein. The touch shot, diving save by Isaacson. Free chance now for the Bows. Back row, Cowell! for the trampoline. 
How about the way that Delton Solberg drew a lot of attention? A great pancake there, but Delton Solberg drew a lot of attention there. Blockers went to him, and here comes the big set out of the back row. Great play by Worsley and Cowell. That's what makes Hawaii so hard to defend, is they have multiple players that can hit the big set, the pipe. Krzyzewski down the line, dug up by Cowell, jump set by Joel to Gasman, but he hit it long. That connection wasn't quite so on target. Yeah, it's a great play though. It's a good. He had an open court. He just kept it in. Hey, Joe was thinking about me. maybe he was going to hit it. Maybe he said it was a little bit too high for Gasman there. So nine serving nine, Turner with the serve. Backside, Rado flies in and once again crushes it. 12 kills now for Ronald Potapunov hitting over 500. We just can't leave the other team's best attacker with only one block run. It's just like asking for trouble. 10 serving nine. Good serve there by Worsley. Here's Shevs. He's having himself an evening. Ten kills. He is still blemish-free in this match. 6'8 junior from Brookfield, Wisconsin. This is the this is the uh, Chevs that I think Joel Walton wanted to see show up last night. You know, Chevs was the Wisconsin high school player of the year back in 2015. Also a high jumper. Yeah, he cleared six foot two inches. That one got all bungled up on the Hawaii side of the net. Point ball state. They leapfrog in front. Hitting percentages dropping a good deal here on both sides of the net in set two. Worsley goes middle to Gasman, and he just catches that far sideline. That ties things up. He's also, he's also the kind of guy where if you set him again back to back, he's not going to make the same mistake twice. He makes sure he kept that ball in play. His arm swing looks really powerful right now as well. It really does. He's, he's in the groove. Outside. How about the dig there by Joe Worsley on the Chinese attempt? Chance though for the Cardinals. Chinese again blocked and roof. about as big a block that Hawaii can put up. 6'9", for a put off with 6'10", Gassman. That's a wall. And there's the most improved part of Rada Paul Punoff's game since he came to Hawaii two years ago. The Bulgarian basher can be the Bulgarian blocker sometimes. Yep. Krzyzewski off the block and down. My goodness, he has been unstoppable. He was all turning. Here in this building, in this Outrigger Invitational back in 2017. He's got major game. He was just a freshman that year. Well, he is certainly not shaken by the surroundings. It appears as though he, in fact, arrives within it, at least when Hawaii's on the other side of the net. Yeah, he made MIVA freshman of the year. He made all MIVA first team. He made all American. I will mention. So it's like he's starting to regain some of that form he had in the freshman year. Malcolm Tella with the serve. The pass there by Levanchi. Seabomb gets the point for Ball State. Yeah, get the goes up. He's facing this pretty solid block. A little bit of a hole there. Dalton Solberg a little late getting out. How about the run up here by Swartz? One That's of the more unique approaches at the service line, huh? That's what they call a hybrid serve, where it looks like he's going to jump corner, but he puts a little spinner at the end, so it becomes like a jump serve. Really effective serve. Nope. When in doubt, just Keep looking the way of Rado. He's got 13 kills. That is nine more than the next closest Hawaii hitter. Oh, 
And then he blasts to serve. 60 miles an hour for an ace. And Hawaii gets to 15 first. Arapunov, primal, here on night two of the Outrigger Invitational. Welcome back. Let's check out how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank, CMAC. Check out uh, right here. Uh, well, we're on the other side of the net now. Check out uh, Dalton, uh, Patrick Gaspin taking two blockers with him, which leaves the net wide open for Stein Van Tilburg. And a similar play right here, Colton Cowell should be thanking Dalton Solbrick for taking two blockers with him. What a play. Boy, he's got that going on. Joe, and Joe Worsley, he's got great peripheral vision. He sees those two blockers, and they're chasing down his middle blocker. So therefore, he knows he can go to his back row attacker. They've been so successful with it. That was a, those two well, well constructed plays. Meanwhile, Potapunov goes into the net with the serve out of the timeout. So 14 serving 15. Isaacson delivers. Here's Potapunov from the back row off the block and just barely out. Joe Worsley was watching that one all the way down to the Terraflex, and it's a point for Hawaii. Another kill for Rado. He's got 14 put downs. You know who else has Terraflex now is the Pyramid. There you go. Did you hear about that? Yeah, they just, they just, they just put it in. Powell into the net. And service error number six for Hawaii. They do have five service aces to counter that. But a tough server here in Seabomb forces the pass tight to the net. And so Joe Worsley improvises. He hasn't called his own number that much lately. Uh, even up in Irvine, I don't believe he tipped that much. Ooh. Power dunked it. So maybe he's going to do that to maybe spread out the offense a little more. It can't just be the, the Rado Parapunov show. He's got to really get everybody involved. Anastasiadis with the serve. Outside it goes to Chinisi. Forget about it. Gasman next to Worsley. Once again, they're trying to pick on Hawaii's smallest blocker, Worsley. But Worsley shows he can more than hold his own as a post blocker out there on the antenna. So 18 serving 15. Anastasiadis taking a little something off of the serve the last two occasions. Shevs is blocked. Outside, it goes to Chinisi. And he rattles it off of the Hawaii blocking out. Chinisi coming off of that 13 kill performance last night and the loss to Pepperdine. He now has three kills, but he's hitting in the negative numbers. Yeah, negative 167. Last night hit 345, so Hawaii has kind of got his number a little bit tonight. They've blocked him several times. Being watched somewhat closely by Joel Walton, Janisi dealing with some knee issues, Coach tells us, and so he's interested to see just how he will physically sustain himself over the course of a three-day tournament. Outside here, Stein. Right down Dole Street. Usual Stein wanted to say hi to his parents. Back home in Amsterdam. Theo and Brigitte, they're probably watching. Not sure what time it is there right now, but I know it's probably early morning. Yeah, I think it's like uh, 6 o'clock in the morning back there. High and away, set goes to Chinisi off the block. And out. It's been a while since they've had the opportunity to watch Stein play via the stream because uh, this is our first televised game in, what, almost a month? Yeah, exactly. I'm sure they're enjoying it as usual. A little tighter than I think they'd like, probably, but this is good for Hawaii to get pushed like this. There was a footfall, not called. Wow. Crowd wanted it. Stein dug up by Seabomb. Seabomb will send a freebie over to Hawaii's side. Worsley, backside to Stein. He says, dig that. Hawaii back up three. Charlie Wade doesn't have to waste a challenge on the football. Stein took care of that. Okay. 
And here's Britt Rosenmeyer coming into the match for Hawaii. Rosie was at the ballpark uh, the other night uh, in the series finale against Longwood. Longwood happens to be a university from Virginia. Rosie is from Virginia Beach. And so he was not there to root them on or anything like that, even though he, had, he did have a connection uh, through some family members to one of the coaches on the Longwood staff. But he was sitting on the Hawaii side. Foul ball comes, and guess who snags it? No. Brett Rosenmeyer. Rosie. Yeah. He said it was kind of a line drive, and so instinctively he put his right hand up. His right hand got a piece of the ball, but he didn't catch it. I think at the last moment he was a little uncertain as to whether he should, you know, yeah. being that that's his hitting hand and all. Yeah. Uh, but fortunately for him, ball bounced around behind him. He was able to grab it. And Brett Rosenmeyer comes away with the souvenir from the Rainbow Baseball game. All right, here we go. Yeah, That's right, Joe Wallen's going to call a timeout. He just made a double sub there. He's going to get a little bit bigger lineup up front. Hawaii by three in set two. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. The number is three. That's the unbeaten seasons in the 49 years of NCAA men's volleyball. UCLA with all three of them, 79, 82, and 84. Shanisi rejected Powell next to Gassman. Well, it's once again, they're picking on the Hawaii's smallest blocker up front. That was Colton Cowell, and Colton Cowell says, we'll have none of that. <laughs> 21 serving 17, and it is Rosie back behind the service line. That goes middle, and a great dig on the Swartz swing. Sets up Rado. Rosenmeyer making it happen in the back row. It may have been one of the, one of the prettiest plays of the year. That ball was driven really hard, should have been down. Gets dug. I mean, the ballet-like set from Joe Wilson, and then Rado finishing. That's what great teams do. They make great plays. Take a look at this from the dig. Rosenmeyer keeps it up. How about Worsley contorting? And then Potapunov, what he's been doing as the AVCA National Player of the Week. He just keeps pushing through. He is like a freight train right now. That was unbelievable. He's got 15 kills. Hitting 600, Rado Potapunov. Hawaii, the block has come alive as well here in this second set. Remember, no blocks for either side in set one. Hawaii now with seven total blocks. So the Akamai Roofing Report, we're going to give you the total blocks for Pat Gassman this season. 59. He is the individual blocking leader nationally. And here's a look at the Rainbow Roofing Company going to work. They finally showed up here in set two. <laughs> They were kind of late for work, weren't they? <laughs> Pat Gassman, who was a Big West Conference Player of the Week, second week of February, put up 3.2 blocks per set in Hawaii's wins on the road against Queens and St. Francis. What a transformation he's had since his freshman year. He, uh, he got a skateboarding accident, broke his skateboard. The next year, planted on top of his locker, remind him to never skateboard again during, during volleyball. Yeah, that's got to be in his contract now. Then he dropped, then he dropped a lot of weight and got, got really muscular and strong weight room. And he's been one of the, one of the success stories, I think. Out of the time, Al Rosemeyer with the serve. Shanisi finds that deep corner. Nice high wrist shot there by Chinese. Goes over the block and down. He now has five kills, still hitting negative numbers. A risk management and insurance major. High toss. And that time, tried to find that same corner. Took a lot of risks there, don't you think? You didn't manage it very well. <laughs> Touche, my friend. Very well done. 23, serving 18. Gassman lobs it over. And that hit by Seabomb. 
misses the four wide. It is a point for Hawaii. You may notice that Ball State has a new setter out there here in the last few rotations. See Matt Cortland Sharonborg, the yeah, junior from Virginia Beach. They went to the double sub to become a little bit larger in the front row. Backside set goes to Blake Reardon. There's the sub. Blake Reardon came in for Quinn Isaacson. Reardon also a junior. Sister Morgan plays volleyball for Loyola. Some MIVA family over there. Aloha ball still for Hawaii here in set two. The set to Cowell and he just shoves it through the triple block and down and make it 41 straight set victories for the Rainbow Warriors. They had to fight early. They're being led by Rado Parapunov's 15 kills. Hawaii can reach into the broom closet. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistic because it doesn't really feel like Hawaii has been as razor sharp from beginning to end of the first two sets. And yet you look at the numbers, they're pretty dominant, C-Mac. You look at the two highlights, the highlighted ones, uh, Hawaii hitting 424 and seven blocks to one for Ball State. Those are two pretty good numbers. But the thing that really jumps out to me, uh, the, another two numbers, uh, Ball State out digging Hawaii 17-13 and Ball State hitting 347. Most opponents, if we... We see Hawaii play hit 140. They're hitting 200 points over the normal opponent's average. So I've been really impressed by Ball State, to be honest with you. Yeah, They're they, really playing some good volleyball. They came to play. They have been competitive. So it appears as though Charlie Wade is going to stay with the starters here at the onset of set number three. We're not going to see the reserves until a little bit later on in this frame, uh, if at all. He wants to take care of business against the Cardinals. They have earned that level of respect from Charlie Wade. Absolutely. This is a sign of respect that he stay with these uh, the same A, a squad, we call them. And uh, I, I suspect that they, they might stay until the, till the end, to be honest with you. Hawaii looking to Log its 14th straight win to start the season. That would be a program record. This could also be a milestone night for the Rainbow Warrior volleyball team because a victory tonight would be number 300 for UH men's volleyball in the Stan Sheriff Center. They have a record of 299 and 109 all time in this building. So a couple of subplots here as we get started. On set number three, Rado Parapunov is dug up. The swing by Chinisi and Gage Worsley, almost in self-defense, put his hands in front of him, and Chinisi gets the kill. So for the third straight set, Ball State strikes first. You know, the other thing, Kanoa, um, Ball State has still not achieved their goal time going to the middle more. Lemuel Turner's only gotten one set, and, and uh, Parker Schwartz has only gotten five sets. Uh, that's not very many. Worsley goes outside here, Stein against the double block, and he gets kill number seven. It has been a almost singular offensive show on either side of the net. Rado Parapunov with 15 kills after the first two sets, hitting 600, and Matt Shev's the only player for Ball State in double figures. He's got 11 kills, and he's hitting almost 700. Well, if you're left-handed, <laughs> tonight's for you. Tonight's your This is your night. <laughs> Shevs on a net violation called against Hawaii, so it continues to be his night. He has yet to commit a hitting error. He's also got a serve very much like Rado's. It tails off at the end. It's a very difficult serve. Only served out there at the end of the second set. He's overall his serve is very good. Here's Gasman in the middle, blocked. <laughs> Stein was in the perfect spot to bump it over the net. And missing the court with Seabom trying to touch it to that far side from the back row. Boy, he hit 389 in the first set, 478 in set two. Oh, the second error for Seabom tonight. He's really played pretty steady attacking wise. On the other side, it was, at least from a hitting percentage standpoint, a tale of two sets for Ball State as Janisi gets another put down. Ball State hit 520 in the opening frame, just a buck 67 in set number two. And it really tailed off. Only one hitting error in the first set. They were just almost perfect. And seven errors in the second, in the second frame. Yeah. 
And here is Chanisi getting ready to serve. This is the sixth appearance for Ball State. And the outrigger invitation, as mentioned, the last was in 2017. Things a little different now, though. We'll get to that in a moment as Cowell touches it over. Diving save by Chevs. So unavailable to get a set, and it winds up being a free chance for Hawaii. Back row set to Stein, and he barely paintbrushed it and missed the floor wide. And I think they're going to ask Charlie Wade to challenge the in-out call there. It wasn't the best executed set to SVT, but Charlie grabs the replay challenge paddle. And Ernie Ho will be tasked with taking another look at this. But I was talking about the previous times that Ball State has played in this tournament. This was the season opening tournament for UH Volleyball. Uh, whereas now, Ball State, they played 17 matches before they came over to Hawaii to embark on this year's Outrigger Invitational. It's a different dynamic for sure. They've already played seven conference matches prior to coming to Hawaii. There's the replay. And, uh, ooh, looks like that was out. Although the Hawaii players are saying it was definitely in. Let's see if we can check another, take another look at it. Ooh. That one from that angle looked like it may have caught just a hair of that sideline, but we'll see. So this like angle. Said, we can't see the line, unfortunately. It does look like it might hit the line there. All right. This is probably the best angle. Ooh, looks like it's half ball, half line. <laughs> and they will not reverse the call. So Ernie Ho decides to stick with the call on the floor. He deemed that it was too close to call, certainly too close to reverse. And hard to argue with yeah, him there. Good call. And Janice, the fans, Charlie Wade, the Rainbows, they will call that athletic gesture. Whether that is true and accurate or not. Here's Pat Gasman to serve. The high toss, and he goes to the jump serve. We saw him flat-footed in that second set. And that one is torched by David Seabong. Quincy transfer is certainly make, making the most of his time in the Stan Sheriff Center tonight. Only a couple errors, got six kills. Sports again with that unorthodox run up, forces the overpass. And taking advantage is David Seabon. Take a look, though, at Parker Swartz. You've talked about this, the hybrid approach. Take a look at this approach if we have an opportunity. Watch this. This is yeah, it's really interesting. something different. Into the twine it goes. It goes left hand, right hand, facing straight on, turn sideways. Putting it all going on there, but he is has been their most effective server. For the most part, his only problem is he also has been missing a lot this year. He's been like a 50% guy, whereas last year, um, Joel Walton was telling me that he was more like a 85% in server. Joe Worsley taking some tape off from, I believe, his hand. Plopping it over in the lap of Josh Walker, the assistant coach. A great set from the knees, but relegated to just sending a free ball over his C-bomb, and that sets up Rado Potapunov, who delivers again. That's kill number 16 on the night. As Potapunov showing no signs of slowing down. Ooh, a little facial there. Hmm. A little insult to injury there for David Seabom. Back row set. Janisi is dug up. Here's Rado. 
Dug up over the net, though. Gage Worsley will play it. Joe goes back row to Stein. And that one will not be returned. So Joe Worsley's got the luxury of having so many great attackers. Stein on one side. Well, put off on the right, Stein on the left. Colton Kyle coming out of the middle in the back. Into the net it goes. Seventh service error for Hawaii. Check in the armor, he's not perfect. He doesn't have the off-speed shot to serve tonight. I think he got a real thrill out of the recognition. Not that he's a knee guy at all, but he certainly did not hide his enthusiasm for being named the ABCA National Player of the Week. Dalton Solbrick just lays the smackdown from the middle. Green biology major was great in the correct classroom. Also, is great at the net right there, hitting that 31 set. Gotta love the reaction. By the way, uh, when Paul Puna called his dad, said, Dad, guess what I made National Player of the Week? And he said, his dad told him, son, individual awards mean nothing in team sports. <laughs> Which brought Rado right back down to That's right. What do you think? That's right. Gotta keep your eye on the prize, right? Yep. Solbrig. That's a pair of laser beams off of the palm of Dalton Solbrick. Lisa Strenma asked for more Goldbrick sets, and she's getting them right now. So she was a middle herself and a great one, two national championships. She will always cheer and vouch for and advocate for those middle attackers, and certainly Solbrick and Gassman have earned her respect. Solbrick tickles the tape. Outside it goes, Chanisi. Cross court and wide, no touch up front. And it's a point for Hawaii. And so they vault ahead. Joel vaulted. Wanted to know if he should challenge. Maybe a touch along the net. And Chinese said, no, I missed it by a lot. And nobody touched the block. Middle set, that's Turner blocked by Gassman and he's able to play it up. Here's Rado, the dink. Sliding save by Levanchi. Outside, it goes to Chinisi down the line and in. He handcuffed Rado that time. Not sure why Worsley didn't go out to the left where Stein Van Tilburg was, but um, Chinisi makes him pay for it right there with that kill down the line. Great shot. So again, Ball State hanging tough here in this early portion of set three, and that'll help. Lemuel Turner off the tape and down for the ace. The jargon they're using these days now, it's called a dirty ace. <laughs> <laughs> and the response to that is an ace is an ace. Yeah. Ball State up one. Here's Gassman. Matt Gasman now with five kills on 10 swings, just one hitting error. He also has a handful of blocks. So just one of your typical nights at the office here for Pat Gasman. Shevs. We haven't heard from Shevs in a little while. Wow, what a block by Steinberg Tilbert reaching way over. Shevs had no chance of the block. That set was too tight. And Stein just got way over. And uh, Shevs really had really nowhere to go. That's now eight total blocks for Hawaii. How about that heater by Worsley? A little pitter patter at the net. Stein with the heavy hand. What's happening now? Ball State's blockers are starting to lean towards Rado's side, which is opening up the left for Stein. You see the middle block, the middle block would lean left towards Rado. All of a sudden, Stein's got a field day out there now. Hawaii up to timeout. Ball State here in the third. Welcome back, Rolo in the house. Rainbow Warrior football head coach Nick Rolovich. 
with the entire Rolo family. As we return to live action and Joe Worsley delivers an ace. And Hawaii now up three. If you need tickets to an upcoming UH contest, you can visit hawaiiathletics.com, call 944-BOWS, or visit the Stan Sheriff Center box office. Three easy ways to get your seats for exciting UH sports action. 4-0 Hawaii run. Shebs able to finally snap it as he works it off the Von Tilburg and Gassman block. Shebs with 14 kills now. He's going for... Uh, a battle with Rado, who, who's got 16 kills. The two of them really putting on a left-handed show tonight. Hawaii right, hitting 462 in this third frame. 357 on the Ball State side. And an ill-timed service error there for Chev. Again, this is a Ball State team that has played an inordinate amount of ranked opponents already this season. The dig there in the back row. The touch shot by Cowell, sniffed out by Shevs. Cowell was waiting for the dump shot. Isaacson goes outside. Chinisi is dug up. Rado against a triple block. Drops the hammer. And a timeout on the floor as Hawaii gets to 15 first. Rado with 17 slams tonight. One of the all-time greats in Rainbow Wahine history, Kanani Danielson taking in the action. Through the, stern, uh, the, through the turnstile tonight uh, on what is a busy night here in the lower campus area. About uh, 2,400 here at the Stan Sheriff Center. And that violation calls against Hawaii. And so a point for Ball State. I think tomorrow night against Pepperdine, the sixth ranked team in the country, I think we'll see the attendance go up. And I think the attendance hopefully will keep growing as we get nearer and nearer towards that Big West Conference Tournament, April 7, uh, 18, 19, 20, which will be like watching the Final Four. Because I think the best four teams in the country will be playing in that, that weekend. Hitting error there by Gassman. Yeah, you're talking about Long Beach State, Hawaii, UC Irvine, UC Santa Barbara, the top four teams in the country. Could be in the final, in the semifinals. <laughs> They're all in the same conference. Overpass put down by Swartz, and just like that, Ball State rips off three straight points. They're within a digit, and Charlie Wade is compelled to signal for a timeout. The Cardinals not going quietly here. Joe Walton's got to be pleased with the effort of his team tonight. You know, they're out digging Hawaii right now, 22 to 18. Uh, they're passing much better than they did last night against uh, Pepperdine. They're hitting better, hitting for a higher percentage, hitting 333 on the night. Actually, right now they're hitting 353. Hawaii's hitting 413. So they're playing as well against Hawaii as any team has this year, including Irvine, including USC. Ball State out of Muncie, Indiana. We've seen them, as mentioned, in previous years. Most of their sports teams compete in the Mid-American Conference. Volleyball on the men's side competes in the MIVA. 15 MIVA championships since 1970, the last in 2002. They adopted the Cardinals nickname, did Ball State, back in 1927. Before that, they were known as the Hoosieroons. <laughs> the Hoosieroons. I kind of like Hoosieroons. To be honest, I do too. <laughs> you know, Joe Walton almost didn't get into coaching. He was working for Nabisco at the time, 30 years ago. And he was in sales and doing quite well. And he said, we're going to offer to go coach. And uh, has ever gone back. And he went back to his alma mater, obviously. And there's only been two coaches in the history of that program, Don Shondell and Joe Walton. And he loves being a part of that legacy. Saw the updated baseball score from Les Morikami Stadium. 3-1 Oregon in the seventh. 
Out of the timeout, Potapunov sets cross court to Cowell. And a great dig by Sunisi in the back. Chev's off the touch by Gassman. Gage Worsley sets up Rado and he pounds it down the line. Rado's got such range. It looks like he's going across court. He pulls it right back down the line. Such a difficult guy to block. Such a difficult player to dig. He has just been splendid here this evening. Back row set, Janisi keeping it tight. Ball State again within one. Adapunov with 18 kills. Next closest is Stein. He has nine, hitting 350. Pass by Gage Worsley. Joe goes outside to Cowell, and he finds that end line. Holton Cowell now with five kills. This is where Hawaii, this is one of two players where Hawaii usually gets separation. When Stein Van Tilburg is in the service line, he usually has a pretty good turn. When Rado is in the behind the service line, they usually have a pretty good turn. Got a piece of the tape there. High ball set goes to Seabon. Right there is Gage. So Joe goes reverse to Rado. Joe Worsley was running full speed the opposite direction and still put up a nectar on the backside to Potapuno. Is this what you call going against the grain or going against the flow? My goodness, that was just putting on another clinic tonight on how to be a deceptive setter. Pass there by Seabom gets the set on the outside, tried to left hand touch it, almost trying to beat the block to it, but instead missed the court wide and Hawaii with some breathing room. Timeout taken by the Cardinals, and how many times have we seen it play out like this? Hawaii tight in sets, and right around this sort of final turn, right around the final pole, if you will, Hawaii able to separate itself. And yeah, they did the same thing at Irvine. When they were down at Irvine, they actually that, that first set, the first night, I believe, was... 33-31? Yeah, that was a long one. And Hawaii was behind. They had set point against them. They really had to dig down to find what kind of a character they really had, and it turns out that they, they answered the call in every way and, uh, and pulled that one out, 33-31, and then the rest of the weekend. I think it set the tone for the rest of the weekend. Everybody said, boy, we threw all the punches out yeah. and we could. Now we're pretty much spent, and the next five sets over the weekend, Hawaii pretty much dominated. Hawaii hit over 5-11, I think, the one of those matches, and that's yeah. against an Irvine team that was number one in blocking in the country. Yeah, exactly. And there's a the guy who's doing his homework, David Hunt, the head coach for the Pepperdine, who's got a lot of experience, mentored under the great Marv Dunphy, and uh, is looking forward to tomorrow night's matchup against Hawaii, number six versus number two. They've had a couple of good wins so far in this tournament, and uh, he likes his team. Yeah, what do you make of they're, they're a great serving team, I'll tell you that. It'll be the toughest serving team Hawaii's faced all year long. And that'll really test their, all of their whole receiving pattern, all the things they've been doing so far in uh, setting up their reception pattern. It's all going to be tested tomorrow night. It'll be a fun one to watch. Morado playing like a National Player of the Week tonight. 19 kills, 593. Hawaii by four out of the timeout, though. Hits it into the net. Again, he tried to hit that, that off-speed one in the area one or four, and it was just, uh, it was uh, no advice. Area, area four, five, sorry. Eight service errors for Hawaii in this one. Powell with the pass tight to the net, and we're going to have a violation against Seabom for reaching across. Interference penalty there against David Seabom. And so Colton Cowell now back behind the line. These close plays, you really got to wait for the ball to break the, the line of the cable. Blasted that one 62 miles an hour on the gun. Sheds 
Little roll shot is dug up here. Stein against the double block, popped up in the air by Lovanchi. Chevs over the shoulder, the one-legged jump. Easy pickings there for Gage. Here's Stein. Oh, Lovanchi with a gem of a dig. Chevs, though, was off time on the jump. And he hits it long. It's a point for Hawaii. Oh, what a dig by Lovanchi. Oh, it's more than a bend. Stein put some major heat on that one. Extra mustard and ketchup. And Lovanchi popped it right up. Well, Lovanchi, Lovanchi only plays defense. They, get, they play with two liberals. The other one is Adam Wessel. Wessel only receives serve. Serve goes along by Cowell. It was the largest lead of this third set for a moment for Hawaii. They're up four. Seabomb into the net. That service error number nine for Ball State. Hawaii's got seven. But Hawaii's got six aces to go along with yeah. it. And here is James Anastasiadis. He has one of those aces. Backside, it's Shevs down the line, dug up by Cowell. Quick set, backside Dorado. A shoulder dig there by Isaacson. From the back row, it's Seabaum again. Cowell protecting the line. Stein finds the floor. And that was a vintage on the Hawaii side of the net. There's one of the better rallies of the year. Both sides playing tremendous back row defense. And uh, Stein, though, finishing it with a flourish. I'll tell you, you can stop him once, but you really can stop him twice in a row. He's so powerful. That hit had some action on the path to travel as well. The overpass by Seabomb. Gasman swipes it down, and they will rise here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Roughly 2,400 on this Friday evening, night two of the Outrigger Invitational. And they will start clapping. Aloha ball. Will the rain brooms strike again? <laughs> Not yet. Hawaii a point away from setting a new program record for best start to a season. They are a point away from winning their 300th match in the Stan Sheriff Center. And they are a point away from extending their record for consecutive set victories to 42. It remains a low ball. Tough pass there by Gage. Stein comes roaring in. And the Rainbow Warriors do it again. Ekahi, Elua, Aloha on night two of the Outrigger Invitational. How about the new little play to finish the match? To pull Stein in from far left, bring him into the middle. He said like a tandem play right over the, the, uh, the middle attacker. And he finds that low blocker up in an open court. Again, Worsley, I'm pretty sure Worsley called that. Or Stein could have audibled it, maybe, but whatever it was, it was a thing of beauty, a way to finish that match. Rado Potapunov goes for 19 kills. Stein von Tilburg with 12. At the end of the match, you have SVT hitting 417. So he ends up having an incredible night statistically for Hawaii and the Rainbow Warriors as a squad. They hit 453, almost 30 percentage points below their season average. <laughs> hey, give credit to Ball State. They hit 316, about 180 points higher than most opponents hit against Hawaii. They also outdug Hawaii 25-24, but Hawaii at the net, eight blocks to one was really one of the defining uh, moments in this match, I think, was uh, Hawaii's dominance at the net. So Hawaii now 14-0, the best start ever for this Rainbow Warrior program. And they have done that by way of a sweep each and every time out. Let's send it over to Scott Rounds. Coach, congratulations on the win. Assess how your team played tonight. 
Yeah, they're pretty gritty. You know, I, mean, I thought Ball State played well. You know, they only made one hitting error in the first set. Neither team had a block in the first set. They hit 520, so uh, we had to play well. You know, had to kind of gut it out. You have now have established a new program record for most consecutive wins to start a season at 14. What does that mean to you? Well, we've played well. You know, we know it's, we're a good team, but you know, at this point, like, records and stats aren't really what we're about. You know, we're just trying to keep better and keep winning and hopefully in a position at the end to play for a championship. All right, the Invitational is played out as we expected. 2-0 Hawaii versus 2-0 Pepperdine. They're sixth in the country. That should be a heck of a match tomorrow night. Yeah, that'll be some high-level stuff. You know, really talented team. You know, one of the storied programs in men's volleyball, and uh, it'll be a battle for sure. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Guys, back over to you. Thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Matt Shevs has a team high, 15 kills, hitting 560. He only had one hitting error the entire evening to go along with seven digs. And Rado Potapuna of 19 kills, hitting 571. Not a bad Hanaho following his ABCA National Player of the Week honor here on night two of the Outrigger Invitational. Yeah, he certainly did not let up for sure or let the award go to his head. But uh, those two players certainly get my, my vote just based on tonight's performance alone for being on the all-tournament team in this Outrigger Hotels Classic. And so with that, we have a true tournament championship match tomorrow night. Hawaii and Pepperdine. What do you think about the matchup? Oh, I like it a lot. I like the fact that Hawaii's going to get pushed. Uh, somebody else is going to push from behind the service line and, and test their passers a little bit more. Uh, I, I think that's going to be a, a great way to sort of a measuring stick, a barometer about how good they are right now uh, when they play this Pepperdine team because the Pepperdine team is known as one of the best serving teams in the country. Pepperdine's also a large team, so Hawaii's going to have to face uh, their size and deal with that. Uh, and they're well coached by David Hunt, uh, you know, um, who's had Marv Dunphy as his mentor for, for so many years. And Marv Dunphy, uh, you know, the, the holder of five national championships. And, and that's just like, like Charlie just said, it's a storied program. It's going to be really, really fun to watch those two teams go after it tomorrow night. Well, 300 victories for this program in this building. It has been a spectacular history and the history books being rewritten here by this 2019 edition of the Rainbow Warriors as they win once again by way of a sweep. Don't forget about the post-game show, but for now, for Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until tomorrow night, everybody, we bid you aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center. Let's take a look at highlights of Hawaii Ball State. We start off with the All-American outside hitter Stein Von Tilburg flying from the right side right there, getting one of his 12 kills on the night. Hit at a 417 clip, also had a couple of service errors. Hawaii was held without a block in the first set, but they made up for it big time in the second and third as they finished the night with eight total team blocks, leading the way the nation's leader in blocks per set, Patrick Gassman, with five and Rado Parapuna off the reigning national player of the year making the case to make it back to back weeks as he had a match high 19 kills on 28 swings hit 571 on the night for the junior from Bulgaria and there you see the Antis they're happy so are the Rainbow Warriors as they win it in three over Ball State they're now 14 and 0 in 19. This is the post game show on Spectrum Sports. Hi, everybody. Scott, Lisa, and Ryan. And no Rainbow Warrior program ever has gotten off to a better start than the 2019 Rainbow Warriors. Well, they're starting to set some records, some more records, if you will. We saw a bunch of them earlier tonight, but congratulations to this team and Charlie Wade and his staff because that is a huge accomplishment. You know, but I, you know, talking with these players, I don't know that they really recognize the significance. They are just focused on getting the job done, and I think that you have to credit the efficiency into which this team plays. I think, barring all these st statistical numbers and the great numbers they're putting up, when you just look at how error-free they are, they, they, they're a team that makes very little errors. They are 
are really focused on the things that they have to do and they have a bunch of weapons that continue to really help this team become one of the top teams in the country. Let me ask you if you guys agree with this but it's hard when you watch teams that are very successful that night in and night out that they can play at such a high level. Occasionally you'll see a team play at the level of their competition if you will. This team doesn't seem to do that. They play at a high level night in and night out regardless of who it is. Well there's something special about this team. Not only do they have depth but they've been together a long time. They did their preseason over in Japan. They've done a lot of traveling together. They've been together for quite a long time. Also they've built what they call to me a trust. They trust in the training. They trust in the si system and I think they've really become on and off the court very close. Brothers, friends, whatever you want to call it. That in itself has created this uh, uh, environment for them, if you will, where they just have this confidence that really has just taken over. You know, you look at teams that are very talented and yet they don't have the success. A lot of that is attributed to just overall team chemistry. And I talked to the team about that and they say that on and off the court, this team really gets along. They are all on the same page. They know what their roles are. And I think a lot of that goes to the leadership. Of course, there are a number of seniors on this year's squad, but a lot of people don't recognize that the junior class of this squad, a lot of them actually came in with the senior class. So you mm -hmm. see Colton Cowell, James Anastasiadis, as well as Pat Gassman. They all came in together. Those three that I mentioned actually had to redshirt. So that's why they are a year behind, but they all came in together. So I think that chemistry overall really has helped this team and, and the leadership has really helped to steer this team in the right direction. That's a, that's a really good point because you forget about that. That was a large class and it's been a very successful one. Let's take a look now at the final numbers from this victory for Hawaii. The stats brought to you by Lemet Yamani and Soldner in Hawaii once again. Look at that hitting percentage. Yeah, from going from zero blocks in set one to 14 for the match, Hawaii really turning it on the wing blockers as well as the middle doing a nice job moving their feet and closing that block. Hawaii hitting 453, continuing on with that high hitting percentage. One of the best in the country. I think one of the areas that Hawaii uh, will circle is those service errors. I know head coach Charlie Wade does not like to see 10 service errors, but Hawaii also picked up six aces. Do want to correct one thing. I, uh, the, the boxes that we got have Hawaii with eight total team blocks, so I don't think they had 14. I think eight is probably closer to the number, but that I'm not correct. sure. We'll just give it to them anyway. Them 14. 14. You'll take it. <laughs> oh, what's another number? Yeah. <laughs> right? We're not talking about numbers, remember? Yeah, we're not. <laughs> But, you know, I thought this was a night in which Hawaii probably didn't play the best they could. But when it's all said and done, they dominated the match. Well, they did. They, were, they had full control of the match from pretty much the get-go. And, again, it goes back to that confidence in the training, trusting in the training, and also the leadership like Ryan was talking about. One thing Joe Worsley said to me immediately after the match was, wow, they were really passing our serves. We, we didn't get as many aces as, as they had earlier. This schedule also has been very unique for this team, running this tournament in the midseason and then having huge breaks in the middle of their season. So it's almost like Hawaii has been able to work on a lot of the little things and get better and better at little things and then come out, and they're just roaring and ready to go. You know, I know we talked about Rado Parpunov having a great night, but also Stein von Tilburg, again, continues to really impressed with his passing with his defense as well as the way that he finds ways to get kills we saw in that the very last play uh, this is another like how it works basically when that, in that last play but we look at some of that kills from Stein von Tilburg you notice that Stein is actually moving a lot around the court we see those kills from the left but there were times where he had a back two when he played opposite he was he comes now inside for more of those lob 22 sets so this outside hitter is really finding ways to get kills in other areas and I think that is going to be so pivotal going up against a Long Beach State team, a team that returns everyone that they had last year as well. Hawaii looking for new ways to diversify their offense so that it's not the same Hawaii team that they saw last year. All right, we're going to come back. And when we do, we're going to tell you who won pick a number. It was over or under 2.68 kills per set for Colton Cowell. Was it Lisa or was it Ryan? We'll find out. Welcome back to the post-game show on Spectrum Sports. 
All right, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for Hawaii from here on out. For the most part, it's going to be a pretty good competition. Tomorrow night, the championship of the Outrigger Invitational, Hawaii number 6 Pepperdine. And then next Friday and Saturday against CSUN. They're ranked 12th. Those are conference matches in the Big West. And then Hawaii with a couple of matches against teams that are not ranked. But you look at what Hawaii has done this weekend. Took care of business against King. And then here tonight against Ball State. And I think tomorrow night you could you could make an, a, a case maybe the second second toughest match Hawaii will have played to this point of the year. Last week at number three, Irvine, you got Pepperdine, who two weeks ago was fourth. They lost a couple of matches, but it's a very good wave squad. They're a very good wave squad. I, I had the opportunity to watch them last week up in California. Their block is big, mm -hmm. and, and they may be able to slow down a little bit of Hawaii's offense. We shall see, but they are very established. They've been, you know, just like Hawaii, they've had a, a tough schedule, and I think that tomorrow night is going to be an awesome opportunity for Hawaii to play another ranked opponent in their on their home court. Yeah, and that's the one thing that I think this team, as well as the coaching staff, would love to see is a full stand share of center. Uh, this is going to be some high-quality volleyball. Not a lot of opportunities. After this match, there will only be four other home matches, and Pepperdine is probably the best of all those remaining four teams. So Hawaii, uh, the players, definitely looking to have their fans come out and help support them. As Lisa say, said, Pepperdine, traditionally known for their first line of defense, which is their block. They do a nice job of touching a lot of balls. Uh, of course, no longer under Marv Dunphy. It's going to be weird not seeing him yeah. along the sideline. No kidding. Uh, but definitely, this is a squad that has continued in the tradition of great Pepperdine squads. And you heard Chris talking over and over about how great a serving team they are. So it'll be fun to watch Way get really challenged in that match match against Pepperdine. All right. It was actually over under. I said pick a number, but over under in game on was total uh, kills per set for Colton Cowell is going to be over under 2.68 per set. You said under, you said over, and Colton came away with uh, five total kills, the same he had last night. I wasn't great in math, but I think you won, Lisa. I, yeah, I think be. I definitely won. <laughs> you got it right. You got it right. No, you, know, you got it right. A, he had a great match. Colton Cal played great tonight. Look at that stuffed block. He is so undersized, if you will. By the way, he's listed at 6'2", not 6'1", in the, in, the, in the roster, as well as a libero. But Colton Cal is just playing, having an excellent year with five kills tonight, Ryan. Yeah. And it wasn't just a five kills run, four blocks, and uh, he had a dig and a couple of other things. Yeah, and that's the other thing. As a second outside, when you're playing against the uh, opposite of a Stein von Tilburg, you're not necessarily going to be the player that needs to put up 10 kills per match. You, you know, your main goal is to play defense, pass well, and just be efficient on the offense, and, and he's proven to do that this season. All right, Ryan, we'll try to make it so you win. Thank you. Tomorrow, Tomorrow night, Thanks. because, I mean, Lisa. I'm winning a lot. You are. You're on it. <laughs> we'll take a break, come back and have some more from the Stan Sheriff Center. Welcome back to the Post Game Show on Spectrum Sports. And there you see the paddle, Hawaii and Pepperdine will go at it for the championship of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Invitational tomorrow night. And we'll have it for you right here on Spectrum Sports. But tonight it was Hawaii in three over Ball State, largely in part because of the man to my far left, Ronald Parapunov, 19 kills, hit 571. First off, congratulations on the win. Thank you, thank you. I want to ask you, because last year as a sophomore, you seemed to have kind of a roller coaster year. You weren't as consistent, but this year, you have been great from the very beginning. What did you do during the offseason to work at getting better at, with your game? Uh, I kind of realized where, where were my, my mistakes last year. Uh, I wasn't that consistent, like you said. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was I was just having up and downs, and I just realized that my body was not in the best shape I could ever be. And the trust that the coach gave me, like, it was bad at the end of the season. My stats weren't that good. So I was thinking about what can I do better. So I was practicing every day and I was doing whatever I can to get better. I even went to the Worsley's family over the summer to practice with them. Did you by chance change up your diet? Oh yeah, for sure I changed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I changed everything. everything. Uh, I talked to a bunch of the guys on our team, our weight coach, Josh Elms. They're always there for us to help us as much as they can. So we kind of sat down and I was like, okay, this, this, and this must go out. That's it. Highlight of your season so far. Here you are mid-season. What for you has been the highlight for, for the team and you? The connection, I think, between us, the way we play, the way we communicate, the way we support each other. It's just being... A, 
the feeling is indescribable. I, I just, I'm impressed every single night we play. Even tonight, Ball State is like amazing team. So they did their best. We did our best. Thank God we end up win winning. So, yeah. You know, you're looking at the schedule moving forward and looking at sort of just the latter half of the schedule. You guys were at Irvine this week. You guys play Pepperdine tomorrow. You guys got a uh, season coming up right after that. So this is sort of getting a lot tougher. Uh, how do you guys mentally switch it into another gear when you know that you're playing against some of these teams that are higher ranked, that are more athletic? And then how do you make those adjustments between the better teams and, and maybe teams that you think you will have an easier time? I'm with? already thinking about Pepperdine. I'm already thinking about the outsides, what they do, what they not. Uh, we're going to watch video tomorrow, hopefully we do our best. It's um, the, the fact that we respect every single team equally and we're super dialed on everything, it's the reason we're doing such a great job so far. Hopefully we keep it this way. It's just, I think it's the respect that we have for them. Now, I, I believe in set three, did you collide with Patrick Gassman? Did you guys whack heads or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I got it pretty excited. we got it right here. Tell us what, what happened right here. <laughs> That wasn't, oh. on that wasn't on purpose, was it? I wanted to give him a kiss. He just ran away. <laughs> yeah. It looks like he got wor the worst of it more than Yeah, I just you. wanted to kiss him and give him a hug, but he was like, no, 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 not on TV. <laughs> we, know, we know you guys are close, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're just proving the point. You know, I, you know, one thing I also think about this year's team, including what you have done, is the play of the defense. Your defense has improved quite a bit. The team's defense is kind of overshadowed because of such the astronomical offensive numbers. Numbers. Would you agree? I do. I do. Uh, I was just trying to do my best, and I know that you cannot be a good player with just one element. This is it. Volleyball is changing. Like I've watched a lot of Italy, Russia, and mm -hmm. just just a guy who hits the ball is no one. No one. Everybody like the top opposites. They're so called cool of They're just crazy defense, blocks, serves, everything. So if if we want to be one of the top teams, we gotta be able to do everything at the best we can. So I've been working on defense because the guys were laughing at me. Last year, my defense was horrible. <laughs> this year is a little bit better. Hopefully, it gets better through the season. Because yeah, that's the difference between the good and the bad teams. That's the difference between good and bad team. Defense. Well, congratulations. Outstanding night. You're the reigning national player of the week. Though I know I heard one of your family members told you it's don't pay attention to individual rewards because it's a team sport. Is that right? Did yeah, your mom dad, or dad? My dad, your dad told me. Dad my dad told that. me. Who cares? It's a team sport. <laughs> That's a good point. It keeps you uh, keeps you grounded. Right? Yeah, it keeps you grounded. It's just just because we won 14 games doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter who starts. It matters who ends. So we're in the middle of the season. So hopefully we get it going. We have amazing leaders. Yes. Believe me, that Joe Worsley is the man in the middle. Like. Every time you ask me who's the best player in America, I'll keep saying Joe Worsley. That's it. That's the man who always keeps his focus, dialed in, everything, everything. Sometimes he takes me 7 a.m. in the morning, are you all right? Just to check us on everybody <laughs> and everything. He's the man who's like in charge of the whole team. And Stein Van Tee with him, of course. The man with experience. This is, uh, just because of his experience, the calmness I have, mm -hmm. just I know if I, I made a mistake, don't worry, Stein got it. The fact that those two of us are on the court is just incredible. Congratulations. Let's make it 15 and 0 tomorrow night. What do you think? We'll see. I'll tell you tomorrow after the game. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good job, Rado. Yeah. Rado, Hawaii, make it three in a row or make it a sweep over Ball State. 14 and 0. They have not dropped a set yet this season. So that'll wrap things up for us here this evening. Special thanks to our outstanding multi-award winning Spectrum Sports crew. For Ronald, for Ryan, for Lisa, I'm Scott. Until next time, we bid you aloha and a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.